Now this one is uh, one of the old digital uh, paintings that is inspired by a movie. I definitely cared about lighting and composition more than anything else. And you can- Hey the portrait here. In this video, I want to answer one of the most common questions I get over the years. Um, as well as talk about some other random things. First of all, regarding the last few videos, thank you all so much for the positive feedback again. Um, I think it's so important and lucky for us to have kind of a, a space of our own uh, to keep our spirit high and positive and more, more positive, right? More positive. So I appreciate that a lot. Okay, so to clarify, I noticed a few comments from my last videos uh, where I was correcting the subtitles for Dimash's rendition of Autumn Strong. Essentially, they are expressing the same sentiment that I focused on the uh, mistranslation too much and I'm, I'm missing out on the music. Why even gone so far as to say that I ruined and butchered the song because I was focusing so much on the subtitle? First of all, I understand where you're coming from and I appreciate your passion a lot. When you're experiencing something amazing and you see others are not experiencing the same thing to its fullest potential, you get a little bit upset, right? I, I get that. That's completely understandable and I think most people can relate. You invite your friend over to watch a movie that you love and they haven't seen before and you kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe just me, I'm just kind of, you know, um, weird that way that you, and doing especially epic parts, you'd be like, or like some crazy twist, you'd be like looking at their face and see their reaction, you know, <laughs> just to see if they uh, are, are enjoying the movie the same way, or at least close to the same level that you did. Because you want them to experience that appreciation, of course. As human beings, we're, we are generally very uh, empathetic creatures. Uh, which is beyond sympathy. We can kind of step into other people's shoes and feel what they feel, especially if it's, some, if it's something that we can relate to. And I think that's why so many people enjoy watching just pure reaction videos of, especially it's first time reaction videos of Dimash's uh, music. Because you literally experience with them that first rush of listening, listening to something like unbelievable and incredible, right? There was a psychological experiment which showed that when a stranger helps another stranger, um, the person who is doing the help, their brain produces very happy and uh, healthy chemicals like oxytocin, serotonin, and so on. And more amazing but understandable is the person who received such help also have a spike of this feeling good chemical in their brain at almost the same level. But what's the most amazing part is if there's a third party, a, a third person who is not involved in this whole thing, but he just saw this, you know, altruistic event going down of, of one stranger or one person helping another person, he's just watching it. His brain released the same level of these feeling good chemicals at almost the same intensity. So we really literally relate to each other on a much deeper level. And that was scientifically proven. So like I mentioned, as for people who uh, commented that I overemphasized on the translation, one, technically it's against YouTube policy to do reaction videos because you are um, violating a form of copyright because it is not covered by fair use. You did not make substantial change to the original source of material, nor did you use it in educational or a parody uh, manner. Some vocal coaches do that. That's fine, but most reaction videos don't, okay? You can't just watch a video, cry, and then have that video be yours. No, that, that video still belongs to, you know, whoever, like, I would imagine Dimash's uh, record company and, and so on. And second of all, don't concern about, I'm not enjoying uh, Dimash's music to its fullest potential. I'm very selfish. I listen to music more than once, especially these Chinese songs that I can listen and understand without looking at subtitles. I released an art video a long time ago where I was doing two portraits at the same time with both hands. And 
it was uh, licensed and then bought by Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's an old TV show. Some of you might still remember it. So my, my point is, when I focus, my, my attention is not totally horrible. Also, like I mentioned, visual art and music is very much alike. And especially with the way I make art videos, there's, there is a time dimension added. It's not just about the final image, it's the entire video. That's my artwork. Imagine if I made a mistake early on and I drew someone who's like cross-eyed um, and I didn't notice. I would have to make the videos from the beginnings from scratch all over again. Uh, the entire video is ruined. So it's not, it's not quite as simple as me just press record and start drawing. I have to plan out how the video flows, how it fits into the background music. And uh, you know obviously I have to make sure I don't make any too big of a mistake in any, early, in any part of the video. Generally, I focus on a large image first, and then I, I go in and define more and more detail as I go along. And as for me, and personally, and li when listening to Dimash, I find it so easily for me to um, visualize uh, his music in shapes, right? Uh, one way that's kind of weird, it's very hard to describe, but one way for, for me to describe to you would be, would, would be like, a graph but it's like a 3d graph where there's color involved sometimes often there's different colors involved there's movement involved and the up and down of the xy part is the intensity and of the sound in terms of te technicality so not necessarily pitch but the intensity of the sound and i think you a lot of a lot of you know what i mean and then in the Z dimension, in this, in the other dimension, when the sound comes towards me or back away from me, that's the emotional intensity of the sound. So generally, that kind of uh, feeling, you know, co comes to me very easily for some reason. It doesn't come to me f from other singers as easily, but for Dimash, it comes to me fairly easily. And lastly, like many of you told me, Dimash picks his sounds very carefully, especially if they are foreign sounds. Um, he picked them based on meaning, lyrics, uh, backstory of the music. So he's not just singing any song that sounds pretty, right? Right? It's not he. He's not just picking me music uh, based on purely like melody. So it's a little bit unfair for you to then blame me to try to clarify the poetic meaning behind the lyrics. Which is the reason that Dimash himself picked those songs in the first place. And not everybody knows Mandarin. But I get those comments are coming from a place of appreciation and love. So don't worry, I got you, and I appreciate your passion very much. And of course, a lot of you said he learned this song in one week at the time that he doesn't understand Mandarin. I have known people who spent hours trying to say one word, one letter, one word, and they couldn't say it properly. <laughs> so, but, but at this point, you know, with Dimash and with his hearing acuity and uh, his vocal control, I'm not surprised he's able to, and he's probably like, you know, his IQ is probably up there, so I'm not even that surprised anymore. Now, before I answer one of the most common questions that I get, I just want to talk a little bit about my art, especially some of the older ones. Now this one is uh, one of the old digital uh, paintings that is inspired by a movie. I definitely cared about lighting and composition more than anything else. 
And you can see my process of doing background first, having an idea of the stage and fill in the main subject. I believe I screwed up on the shadows a lot. Uh, the shape is probably would not cause a shadow that looks anything like that. But overall, it turned out better than I thought it would. Um, and I that's one of the digital first that's one of the first few digital paintings that I did that I really liked. And this one is an example of a piece that I did that I really want to focus on the emotions. So it's this is Aya from Game of Thrones. For the two of you who doesn't know, you know, spoilers alert, of course. Uh, but she, this little girl, she used to be a very innocent, uh, happy, good tomboy. And uh, at this point in the story, she went through a lot of tragedy. So this is a turning point of her entire, almost personality in a sense. This is the point where she lost her innocence. So. There is a bunch of things that I want to convey on this poker face. One is loss of innocence, and, and numb, and emptiness, and behind it, a slight determination, and malice. Of course, right? Hatred and malice. Just a little bit towards the bad guys. I remember doing this drawing like two to three times. Uh, once I got the expression a little bit too angry, uh, another time a little bit too sad, but I want a coldness to be mixed in there, like an assassin. And I think this one did a decent job. And this one is pastel and just a general pretty picture of Scarlett Johansson. So not all my videos are drawn and thought about the same way. So now that you know a little bit more about my artwork and you listen to Dimash, the topic of practice versus talent in mastering any skill or craft is the common question that I get, which usually comes in the form of, um, you know, do you need talent to do this? How much talent you need to do to be able to do this? Uh, can anybody do this? Or there's no way I can do this. I know there's no way in a million years that I can do anything any remotely close to this and so on. And people do often have the misconception that uh, you cannot do this or that really well unless you have a, a natural talent in that area. And here's my take on the whole thing. This clip I'm about to show, I digged up a long time ago from one of my old videos that's now buried. And I thought it might be worthwhile to bring back up and share with you guys on what I think is uh, regarding a talent versus practice in learning some skill. Okay, the next one is not a question, but a statement I have seen a lot. I mean, and it's very flattering. But I just want to share my own thoughts on it. Talent. Of course, we can't talk about that without talking about its flip side. Practice and effort. As for the whole inherent talent versus practice thing that always comes up, I can only say based on my own limited understanding that, as is the case with almost everything, right? There is no fine line, and it is all a mixture of gray, or a color wheel perhaps. I think most would agree that it is a mixture of both with regarding to any skill we want to acquire and master. But how much and what proportion? That is different from individual to individual, and also depends on the nature of the skill itself. Uh, you take swimming for example. With practice, almost everyone can do it. I mean, some learn faster than others given the same training, but with effort, almost everyone can become a decent swimmer. Now, composing a symphony at, you know, age 12, or run like Wusan Bolt, now that's something that leans more toward the talent side. You still need hard work, but not too many can accomplish that with practice and hard work alone. Now, with art and drawing, especially with regards to the basic skills of drawing, which is to be able to draw realistically and accurately, both in tone and proportion. Make no mistake, this is overall a skill that anyone can learn. Now, to draw at a level of, say, John Sargent or Rembrandt, that may require a little more touch of talent beyond practice. But, for the most cases, what most people consider to be able to draw just requires some fundamental skills. Those skills are not the end all be all. And once you acquire those skills, you can keep on improving in whatever direction you like. But, and I cannot stress this enough, 
Drawing is a skill, like swimming, which can be taught, learned, and mastered by almost anyone who puts in the effort. If you can draw a stick figure, and you can appreciate the beauty of the world with your eyes, and you can recognize your family and friends' faces, that means you have all the necessary prerequisites to be able to go to the next level. And if you're lucky and you know you have a special talent in any particular area, do not forget this quote. So sure, everyone learns at different paces, but I will say something that I believe is true. No matter what you think your talent or lack of is for what you are trying to accomplish, with effort, you can far surpass what you believe yourself is capable of. You may or may not be able to draw like Rembrandt. You may or may not be able to beat Michael Phelps, even if you learn how to swim. But you will certainly surprise yourself in the most delightful way with what you can accomplish with practice. And that should be the most important and valuable yardstick for us to measure against and strive toward, which is our own potential in the direction of our passion. So that's my take on talent versus practice versus self-improvement, really. And please comment on whether you agree or disagree with it and any other insight you might have. If you do disagree with a lot part of it, uh, feel free to tell me I'm stupid, but hopefully back that up with some uh, sound reasoning so I can reflect on it a bit better. And, uh, you know, it's uh, the 23rd. Uh, I wish everybody a happy end of new year happy holidays but honestly i believe in happy every day but i wish everyone a happy holidays and uh you know those of you who can be with your families appreciate that and those who those of you who can't you know you can just technology is make makes facetime easy and uh make sure to subscribe for uh you know my future videos for my future videos Okay, thanks guys for watching my video. You are all beautiful, and I'll see you next time.